the kids are making making a little noise. It makes it like a little bit difficult to film sometimes. You done? Hey, turtle nerds, welcome back to another video. So little Jelly here is my North American spotted turtle. Well, I got him over in September at a local reptile expo, and he's been living in this straight up storage bin for the last couple months, simply because spotted turtles like shallow water. They're not really the best swimmers. They live all throughout the Northeast and go all the way down uh, to sort of the upper panhandle of Florida, native to the United States, and they are an endangered species. He was really small, so I wanted to be able to keep an eye on him and not have too many sort of things for him to get stuck in or possibly drown and uh, get stuck underneath. So now that he's a little bit bigger, he's a much stronger swimmer and he's showing a lot of signs of wanting to get out of his little old enclosure. He was sort of swimming against the side of the walls and looking to climb up and just really trying to get out of there at almost all hours of the day, which makes me feel bad because I sleep like 10 feet away from where he's at and I see him swimming against the tank all the time, and it makes me feel bad. So I wanted to upgrade him. Hey, that's much better. Let's go ahead and take a trip to get little Jelly over there, a very high-tech, extremely, extremely expensive, but new enclosure. Let's go. No, I would. I would get my patella popper out, but like, why are you? So here I have two kiddie pools from Walmart, and the reason that I have the second one is just to provide some extra support and structure because these things are flimsy as heck. And so just to make sure that it doesn't sort of fall over or leak or do anything weird, I got two of them. So little Jelly over there is getting an upgrade. Okay. So I literally just got some play sand from Walmart. What I'm gonna do is take it, put it in this container, rinse it out really good, really well. We love grammar. Take that, put it in the pool, and then keep doing that until I use up all the sand and make a nice little base layer. So you can see all this cloudy water and all this garbage. You really wanna rinse this super well and make sure that all of it comes out I am lucky enough to have something with handles, so the cruddy water floats to the top and then comes out both sides. Uh, and basically I'll just do this until it runs clear. As we can see, after just a couple of minutes, if you get in here, you can see all the way down to my hand and it's starting to run clear. So I'm going to probably let this run for another one to two minutes and then it will be ready to go in the mini pond. This sand and the pool cost me $15, um, sorry, $15 for this, the sand, and a half gallon of Yoohoo chocolate milk. Awesome, let's go get round two. So as you can see, there's a whole bunch of foam and garbage that comes out of this sand. That's why you guys really wanna make sure that you rinse it super duper well. You cannot even see my hand when it goes down to the bottom can't see like three inches into that water, but by the time we're done getting it nice and cleaned off, you'll be able to see right down to the sand bed. Okay, so I basically added a little bit of water in order to make the sand more pliable because otherwise it sort of bunches up and gets really annoying to work with. So now I'm gonna go ahead and spread out, this was two bags of sand. Okay, so now I'm gonna pull these guys out. There's two fish in there, I'm gonna pull them out. Um, put in some dechlorinator and then get this filled with water and moved into a uh, position. All right, so now I'm gonna add dechlorinator to this because there is, as you can see, some water in there and I don't want it to bother a little jelly belly. We're gonna measure out a very defined, specified amount. Perfect. Actually, I'm gonna move him into here. So we're gonna take this, take this old water, just because I feel like the old water's got some good stuff in it. it may not make a difference at all, but So now before filling this up with water and it getting really, really heavy, I'm gonna slide it into position. 
I have taken out uh, about a half bag of sand just because there was way too much. I just wanted a very thin coating in this enclosure because if there's too much, there can be um, anaerobic bacteria that settle down at the bottom and then they can turn into a poisonous gas, which is no bueno. So now let's introduce jelly and the fish. Let's first take a little fish. There's one fish. And there's the second one. Go free. Whee! And now let's get old Jelly Belly. As we can see, he is growing really, really well. He's still got this weird little thing. I don't know what that is. He's had it since a hatchling, not shell rot, but not harmful. He's still got his full tail looking beautifully. And let's let him go. I'm going to put him on land so he gets a moment to take a breath of air before diving in. Right into his little cave. That's his little man cave. And as we can see, the water is just high enough so he goes on his back two legs and can come up and get a breath of air. Um, and then the good thing is that this pool is deep enough to where I can always fill it up more if I really want to for when he starts growing a little bit bigger. So when I first put the pool pond together, little Jelly here was still super stressed out. He was sort of swimming against the walls, not really feeling comfortable with his enclosure. I was trying to think of a couple reasons why. I thought that the enclosure looked a little bit too fake. And so I wanted to get a couple of things in order to make it a little bit more natural. I took a look at the habitat that spotted turtles would naturally live in, and there's a lot of foliage and leaves and sticks and driftwood and plants, and all that kind of stuff for them to hide in. And sort of that kind of stuff is what I wanted to add to this enclosure to make it more natural for little jelly. And sure enough, when I started adding the leaves and whatnot, he started to get a lot more comfortable. And now he enjoys chilling out in there and sort of feels a lot more secure hidden underneath all of the leaves. So in order to make this more natural, I picked up some driftwood from the side of the road. I am literally walking back from work next to a busy road, so sorry about the audio, but I found this sweet as heck piece of driftwood that had bark peeling off of it. I peeled the rest off and it looks beautiful. This is going for Jelly's tank. Purchased some plants from my local fish store, which is where I work. And I also got a bunch of leaves. These are uh, sea grape leaves. Uh, the plant is called the sea grape and it drops these sort of big round leaves. I took them, baked them in the oven at like 325 for a couple of minutes. So rinsed them all out, dried them out and tossed them in. I understand that it's dark and the lighting's not great and whatever. But I am not waiting to put this stuff in because little Jelly Belly needs a place to hide because right now he's just using that little garbage thing. Oh no, he's not. He's right there. He's enjoying his new plant. But as you can see, he's looking for a place to sort of wedge himself and sleep. So I'm hoping that these pieces might help him out a little bit. And I'm gonna go ahead and put the second one. Maybe I'll pop out one of the rocks or both of the rocks and make that his basking area. So now for what's really gonna make him happy, some leaf litter. And look at that, he's already beginning to feel safer. He's no longer going against the walls. As soon as I dropped the leaves in, he went underneath that piece of wood, right underneath these leaves where he feels safer. Look, there he is. That's perfect. That's the exact type of behavior I wanna see. And then as these ones decay with water changes and whatnot, I can sort of change them out. Put in new different sort of pieces and some of them are gonna sink and some will float. Look at this. He's just below the surface of the water. There he goes swimming away. But you could see he was poking his head up right underneath that leaf. Cause this is exactly what these guys would do in the wild. So in all, I would say that this pool holds maybe 20 to 25 gallons of water. We have a whole bunch of sea grape leaves that have littered the entire pond. And little Jelly, you can see is right here, totally loving his new enclosure. At least I hope he does.
I have this 125 watt mercury vapor bulb and it is blasting onto this piece of driftwood that I found along with this one on the side of the road. We have a little bit of water sprite right here, some wisteria and a little bit of anacris here and right over here. This is an Aquion internal filter. I forget the exact name, but it filters up to, I believe, 40 gallons of water, something like that. Just something to circulate and clean up the water a little bit. There's a little jelly. Hi, buddy. I hope you like your new pond. And I also tossed in a bunch of guppies who have already begun breeding, and there's a couple of fries somewhere, but usually they hang out like over here or over here in the leaves. Here are all those little guppies. And here's little Jelly. Also, there is no heater in this enclosure because spotted turtles kind of like cold water. And here are some of the guppy fry I was talking about. Hello babies, you guys will be next week's video, don't worry. He's never done this before. Hi buddy, that's not where the basking light is. It's over there. He was just basking this morning for the first time as well. Oh, are you taking my advice? Ooh. What a nugget. So thank you guys so much for watching. If you want to see more of the stuff that I'm doing, please hit the subscribe button. Turn on the little bell notification thingy if you want to get notified of when I make a new video. Jelly thanks you, I thank you, and I will see you all in the next one.